Okay, so in the last lecture, we successfully set up a project on Google Developers Console and we were able to enable Google Map API on the project and as well generated an API key that we can use to set up our map. Now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and install Google Map packages in our project. So to do that, I'm going to navigate to the project menu and I'm going to go to manage Nokia packages. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and search for xamarin.ios.googlemaps. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and search for, okay, so this is the Google Map package that we're interested in. So at the time this video is being recorded, I noticed that this particular Google Map version is a little bit buggy, but we're going to try to make use of it. But if we run into any kind of issue that we can manage, we'll just have to roll back to the older version. So I'm going to go ahead and add this package to our project. Right, so our package has successfully been installed. Now to set up our Google Map, the first thing we need to do will be to go ahead and enable our map services in our appdelegate.cs. So I'm going to go to appdelegate. Just before I started enabling Firebase, I'm going to go ahead and enable our Google Maps. So I'm going to go ahead and say map services. Okay, so let's go ahead and resolve this. All right. So I'm going to have map services dot provide API key. So this is the point that we are going to make use of the API key that we generated in the Google Developers Console. So if I return to my Google Developers Console, this is the API key that we are referring to. So I can go ahead and click on this button to copy it. Alright, so we need to go ahead and paste this here. And bam! So we successfully enabled our map services. Now the next thing we need to do will be to add the map to our design because we've not actually done anything like that. So all we need to do will be to go to our toolbox. We're going to go ahead and drag a view, an ordinary view. So we're going to drop it into our view controller. Alright, so we have an ordinary view in our view controller. So from our completed project, we can see that the map is actually covering the entire area of our design. So it means that if we're going to use this view as our map, we need it to cover the entire place. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and expand our view. Expand our view. Alright, now the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and name this view. Right, so we're going to name it GMAP. So the GMAP stands for Google Map. So if it's more convenient, you can just go ahead and call it Google Map. So I think this is much more explanatory. So the next thing we need to do will be to go ahead and set auto sizing profile for this particular view. So when I go to layout, so I'm going to go ahead and select all of the profiles because we want our Google Map to take up the entire view. That's why this type of auto sizing profile is just appropriate for our Google map. Now the next thing we need to do will be to go back to our widget properties and we are going to go to class. Now we need to pay attention to this particular property. So this is actually the property that turns this particular view into a Google map. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this down and I'm going to select GMS map view as the class. All right. Now the final thing we need to do is to send this view to the back. So as you can see, every other view that we have on this page is actually on the Google Map. So it means that Google Map needs to be the first view on this particular page. So I'm going to right click on this view. I'm going to go to Arrange and I'm going to select Send to Back. Alright, so when we select Send to Back, you can see that every other view that we have on this particular page is now on our Google Map view. And just for convenience sake, you can also go ahead and edit the background. You can just use a gray color for the background. So this will help us to know what is what on our layout. And I can tell you that setting Google Map up in iOS is very straightforward and very easy. So I can tell you that we are done. Now to verify that everything works appropriately, let's go ahead and run our app on a simulator.
okay so our project is building and we have some errors so these are the errors that I was talking about so you can see that we have a lot of them here so what I'm going to do will be to try to reload our project and if this doesn't work it means that we just have to downgrade the version of our Google Maps and everything will just be fine so I'm going to go ahead and close the project alright so I'm going to try to run it again alright so our project is ready to go so just to fix the color issue that we usually have it's always very important that we do this to ensure that we don't run into any form of storyboard errors so just change one color and just change it back so our colors are showing okay so let's go ahead and try to run this app again so we still have the same errors okay so all we need to do will be to go ahead and downgrade our map version so I had to go through all this pain so that we'll see the reason why we are not using the latest version from onset. So now that we all agree that we should downgrade the version of our Google Map Nugget Package, so I'm going to return back to our Nugget Package Manager. So firstly, I'm going to go to the Installed tab. So you can see that we have Google Maps here. So the first thing I want to do will be to go ahead and uninstall the package. Okay, so the package has been successfully uninstalled. So we need to return back to our Nugget Package Manager. So we are going to try to reinstall Google Map, but an earlier version. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this down. And I'm going to select version 3.1.0. So this is the version that we're going to make use of. So I'm going to go ahead and add this package. Right, so we successfully added Google Maps back into our app, but this time around we are making use of an earlier version. So we're going to go ahead and try to run our app. Okay, so we have some storyboard error. So as always, what to do here is to go ahead and close the storyboard file. And we're going to go to our Solution Explorer and open the storyboard file again. So by now, I'm very certain that we're already very used to this process. So this is more like a bug in Visual Studio. I'm very certain that they're going to fix it eventually. So I'm going to go ahead and change the test color to something else. So the color comes back. So I just take it back to black color. So now if we try to run our application, everything will just work. All right, so what we expect to see is our application but this time around with Google Maps. Alright, so now that we resolved this issue, let's go ahead and try to run our app again. And bam, so our build is successful. So we're going to be having our app in a few seconds. Okay. And bam, so here we have our map. So it's going to take a few seconds to load up. And, <laughs> and here we go, guys. So we successfully added maps to our app. So this is what Google Map looks like, okay. So this looks pretty good. Alright, so we are making real progress here. So guys, now the next thing we need to do is to go ahead and fetch our current location. Because as you can see, we have Google Map here, but I'm currently not in Germany. So I want our map to be able to automatically fetch our current location. So this is exactly what we are going to be doing in our next lesson. So see you in the next class.